What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Live Your Vision. I'm your host, Austin, as always. And today we are going to get into a topic that is pertinent to physical activity, but we're going to shift it more in the mental and emotional side of this topic. And this topic is change. Very broad topic. So like I said, I'm going to try and narrow it down a little bit and talk briefly on how change affects us depending on what type of change it is. So so we're going to talk about how change affects our everyday lives, so to speak, particularly with stress. So, so change affects us in quite a few ways, mentally, emotionally, in the sense that it oftentimes creates stress. So if you are changing jobs, if you are moving to a new town, if you are taking on newer responsibility, if you are holding yourself to a level of expectation, whether you are a competitive athlete, whether you are just at your job and you're trying to hit a certain quota or marker of performance that either your boss has set for you or that you have set for yourself, it's easy to look at your rate of change and measure it based on what you've been doing, who you've been talking to, and it's an easy way to get yourself discouraged as to how much progress you're actually making. So let's boil this down and start with a physiological change. So you have just moved to a new town or you've just changed jobs. You have put yourself in an entirely new environment with new people, a new place, new responsibilities, and it's going to take some time to make that more of a routine. And so here is why change causes this stress. So one of the most common fears in humanity is fear of the unknown. And that is the root from which stress from change comes from. Now, I'm going to lead off and say that I'm not a psychological professional. Uh, this is all just advice and just what I've collected over the years that I've had to deal with change. And I'm just trying to create a, a medium, a form of communication that hopefully resonates with some of you. So just bear with me and I'm going to explain it as best I can. And hopefully this has some value to those of you that are listening. So the reason why we are adverse to change at first is because, like I said, fear of the unknown. We have to deal with new people. We have to drive new places, change up our routine where we used to have security in the routine. The routine being we knew who we were going to deal with, we knew their emotional and mental capacities, how to speak to them, how to deal with them and interact with them. Same thing with new places. You knew your commute, you knew exactly how long it was going to take to get there. You knew your favorite coffee spot was going to be on the corner waiting for you. And we know what is going to happen. We know that there are no major threats in the sense that nothing that is going to detract from our regular routine. So this is stemming back from the caveman days. Threats back then being, is there anything that's going to eat us or anything that's going to kill us? We live in a world now where that's generally not something to be afraid of. What that has morphed into is, are there things that are going to make me late? Are these new people that I'm working with going to interact with me the same way that the old people did? What else do I have to worry about? And it takes time for you to get your head around these new stimulus and that 
is what creates that stress until we eventually go through day by day by day and establish a new routine. And then all of a sudden, all those things that stressed you out, all those unknown variables become known. And it becomes that much easier to settle into this new pace of life. So that's just one dimension of change. And it's more of a external change. The change of the things around you, your home, your work, the people that you interact with. Let's flip the switch and talk about internal change. How do we deal with changing our lives, so to speak? And it starts with changing our thought process because it in turn controls what happens to our bodies, to our physical reactions to things. So a lot of times, whether you are, whether you consider yourself more of a proactive person or someone that is a little bit less proactive and has trouble getting things going when it comes to reaching your goals. And this could be anything from performance in the gym, again, to professional job, to anything in between. A lot of times you will look inward and ask yourself, am I good enough? Can I do this? Is it possible for me to reach the level that I want to? With situations like that, we look at the end goal. And we look then at the distance between us and that goal and we see how much road there is in front of us. And it's often discouraging because you see all of this work that has to be done and you just want the result. It ties into that instant gratification. You see the goal. You see other people that have what you want, whether it's money, whether it is status, and oftentimes just happiness. You say, oh, I want to be happy like them. I want to have the white picket fence, the family, the car, not having to worry about finances. And there's a dimension of this where the grass is always greener on the other side because you don't know the struggles that those happy, so-and-so happy people have. They probably had to struggle just as much as you do, and everyone's struggles are extremely unique. So it's apples to oranges, and it's never that linear. We often look at change as this linear thing. We grow up, we get a sense of the world, we go to school, we get a job, we start a family, we retire, and then life rolls on. It's become this mold that a lot of people have struggled with because they feel either behind the eight ball or they are not where they should be at this point in life. They say, oh boy, I'm, I'm 25 years old and I didn't finish that college degree. I'm 30 years old and I haven't started a family yet. I'm 40 years old and I haven't finished school yet. We don't exist inside that mold. This is a generally accepted framework, I guess would be the best way to put it. That's exactly what it is, suggested. Not in the sense that, oh, you should try to fit inside this timeline that most people are doing, but if you do something else, all right, that's fine too. No one has a time frame for when things should be done. The only person that decides that is you. Look inside yourself and ask, what do I want to do? Sure, you can set a time for yourself, set a time frame for yourself. In one year, I want to be doing this. In five years, I want to be doing that. It's important to know what you want. I think it's even more important to know what you don't want but that is a topic for another day. Let's stick to change. So 
we have these goals now, regardless of age, regardless of gender, regardless of what the external world thinks, you have your goal and you know deep down it's what you want. What you have to do is set short term goals. Say in five years, you want to be making another 20 grand. Work backwards from that and say, all right, what can I do in the next month to do that? Not even the next year, but within the next month, because it helps you more actively do things in your present day, in your present life, today, right now, to move towards that goal. So say in a month's time, you might not be making any more money, but now you have these ideas, these creative ideas. Maybe you're going to start up your own small business. Maybe you're going to try and be employee of the month. But the point is, start today not towards moving towards that long, long-term goal, but accomplishing the short-term goal that you set for yourself. That's something that mentally will be a lot easier to do. And going back to that linear progression of life, there is no set standard. There are things that other people do, and there are the things that you do. Ask yourself, is this something that makes me happy or is this something that will make the people around me happy? And it takes transparency. And transparency is hard because it means being vulnerable. So that's something that you really have to look deep inside yourself. And if it scares you, then that's probably a good thing. It won't make it any easier to do, but doing that, especially in the company of those that trust you and love you, is certainly the right step. So that is a good way to look at emotional change in yourself, in the standards that you're holding for yourself, and not the standards that society as a whole is holding you to. It's important to have goals, but make sure that you set short-term goals to get there because that is really how it's done going from zero to a hundred is a really hard thing to do and it usually takes a lot of time and money and so when you look back at it one year into a five-year goal it's easy to say man I'm really just not where I wanted to be but look at the distance from where you started if progress was made then you are successful to any degree. If you haven't made any progress, then that's something to look back to the drawing board and say, what can I do differently that will create progress? That's super important. So this ties in kind of the, the half brother, half sister to change. And that is progress. What is progress? It can be looked at as a rate of change or just the transitioning from one state to another in the grand scheme of your plan to change from one thing to another, to move from point A to point B, all inside that grand scheme. Progress is an absolute necessary measuring factor to measuring success whether it is financial, emotional, mental, spiritual, physical, all of it. It is the way we measure our change. And so it really depends on how quickly you think the change is going to happen. Going back to Oh, I'm still not at that long-term goal yet. It's easy to look at that and be discouraged. But again, look at the progress that you have made so far. That's the important thing to look at. But beyond that, it's important enough to be making progress, but then also look back and 
ask yourself, what can I be doing better? Are there areas of this plan that can be improved? Look back and reflect. So to give this idea a little bit of tangible form, we're gonna look at a more businessy side of it. So let's look at Lean Six Sigma. So for those of you that don't know, Lean Six Sigma is a business model that was created that are used to measure progress and to create innovative ideas and make changes to plans and processes to make things more efficient, to improve the flow of ideas and creative change in order to create a more effective product. And I'll post a link to some Lean Six Sigma videos. I think they're super important, not just for people that are in the business world or operations management world, but for people that are just looking to look deeper in themselves to anything that they have going on. So these ideas can be applied anywhere, not just in the business world, but to anything that you are trying to create for yourself. So we have innovation cycles, pretty much. And to put it in a very general standpoint, you start with a process or product and you see what it creates. You look at the steps that you have to go through to get from point A to point B, from nothing to something, from raw material to finished product. And when it's all said and done, you have your product and it creates profit or it does what you want it to do. And the important part of Lean Six Sigma is not to say, all right, we have our finished product, the system works. But the important part is to look at it and say, what pieces of this system can be improved? Can we make this product faster? Can we create less waste? Is there anything that needs to be changed? Is there a line of communication that needs to be opened somewhere else between this party with this party with that party that will either expedite the process and make everything happen faster to make it more efficient? That's kind of the basis of Lean Six Sigma to constantly look back, not just at the process as a whole, but at the small pieces that make up this process and say, what can be improved? What can be more efficient to essentially make our lives easier, to create more by using less? And the same thing can be looked at with creative processes. Is there something else I can do to create inspiration for myself. What do I do if I can't find this inspiration? Do I need to try new things? Do I need to meditate? Do I need to just keep moving? And the answer and not to phone in an answer is it depends. It depends on one, what are you trying to create? Are you just trying to create a better life for yourself? Are you trying to create a product, a service? And so for the basis of this show, let's stick to the more intangible stuff. We are trying to improve our life. So look at your day to day, from your wake up to the time you go to bed. Are we doing anything that would be considered a waste of time? And looking at that, it's almost not a good way to put it. So. You have to ask yourself, where do I find the value in my time? Do I take that half an hour from when I wake up and do I hop right in the shower and go to work? And for some, that might be necessary. And for others, it can be, do I take that first 20 minutes, half hour and breathe, maybe meditate, stretch, do a little bit of exercise, do something that creates some positive flow in your body and in your brain that changes how you're going to attack the day. 
a lot of people like to go to the gym early in the morning for this exact reason because it sets the tone for their day. They already got something done. There's a great book called Make Your Bed for that exact purpose. A lot of people make their bed because it's accomplishing something on the day and it sets the tone. So if you're not doing something like this, something as simple as making your bed, maybe try it. Create a routine. So that you've already created something, so that you've already done something for the day. And you say, that's one thing, what else can I do? And it builds on that. Do you do some yoga? Do you go and exercise? Do you read? Do something that is not just get up, go to work, come home, eat dinner, go to sleep and work is again and that's not to downplay your professional life in almost every situation that is what fuels your ability to live not saying don't go to work for obvious reasons and I'm not saying downplay the value that your professional life has on your overall life But what I'm trying to say is find the time outside of your professional life or even inside of it to invest in yourself. And diving more into the professional life. Don't forget what you're going to say. Don't work yourself into the ground and come home exhausted and let that be the only validation for your work. I believe we're living in a time and hopefully transitioning out of a time where exhaustion is a status symbol, where we work 10 to 14 hours a day and commute and barely have time for anything else but you say but I'm making that sweet money and I can afford all of these things or I can afford these things for my family yes sacrifice is important because without it I don't think a lot of change can happen particularly in the professional world we have to give some part of ourselves to that otherwise progression might be hard and again this is using these terms very loosely because everyone's job is different everyone's life is different everyone's goals are different but if we give all of ourselves to our professional lives then we don't have any more to invest in ourselves and we become zombies and that is where all the terms that we're used to hearing oh we're just part of the rat race or Um, just a commuter zombie that's where that comes from we have to learn to invest in ourselves what lights a fire inside of us and how do we hold on to that with everything that we've got that's what you need to do to hopefully eventually move away from this burnout I'm not saying don't be proud of what you do And if you're tired from it, from putting that much energy into it, that's good. But for our overall health, you have to learn to take some time and rest. Whether that is, like I said, reading a book, doing some yoga, exercising, taking an hour of the day for yourself, finding time to spend with your kids that at one point may have been exhausting but now you can hopefully find some energizing value or something that gives back to you as a person, something that gives you life, gives you energy. We can't continuously give and give and give pieces of ourselves without getting back because then you don't have anything left. So, 
look inside of yourself and see if any of these things are present in you. If you do want to create change, if you want to move in a direction that makes you happy, if you want to move faster or slower, the rate of change is up to you. The progress is up to you. These are the things that you have to think about and ask yourself before anybody else, is this what I want to do? Am I moving towards my goal? And then ask the people that love you, the people in your inner circle, this is something that I want to do. How can I get there faster? None of us are in this alone. That's super important to remember. So that's a, as far as I can say, a pretty general, inclusive way of looking at change and subsequently progress. And if you have a story to tell about how you've been able to change yourself, how you are progressing differently, whether it's because of this video or not, we here at Live Your Vision would love to hear about it. Reach out. Uh, you can reach out to me at Austin dot L Y V at gmail.com. And let me know if you guys have a story to tell, because that is exactly what Live Your Vision was made for. Authentic stories from authentic humans. That is what we strive to do. And we want to show the world that being you and authentically you is what's going to lead you to a happy life for yourself and for everyone around you. So thank you so much for tuning in, for listening, for taking value in these words. And feel free to like and subscribe, leave a comment, uh, 